If you want to come hang out more with me, be sure to check out my podcast, Mama's Boys Podcast, 50% Facts, both links in the bio. And also, I'm streaming on Twitch every single night if you guys want more personal interaction. I'll be there all the time. Again, comment what you guys want me to cover in the next video. Let's hop into the video. Here's another one. Newsflash, brand new exercise, 2019 trend, body weight training. Wow. The modality uses your body weight. Tell me more. I'm not sure what we're talking about yet. Body weight training. This modality uses your body weight. Wait, bring that back. I'm still confused. I'm, I'm stuck on chapter one. Think push-ups and planks to get you sweating. A push-up? A push-up? We're big, we're big fans of no equipment and do-it-yourself equipment workouts because they're extremely convenient, great for any time, anywhere, and well, they work. Your body itself is a truly great resistance tool. And actually, the truth is, I'm no scientist, but I don't think your body is a great resistance tool. I think it's gravity. I think we're pushing against gravity, but that's a nuance we don't need to dig into. Are body weight exercises great? Yes. Pull-ups, push-ups, planks, body weight lunges. There's tons of great exercises and you can apply them differently across the board. Even a power lifter, I think, can uh, get a lot of benefit from warming up on, on a lower body day, doing some body weight lunges. Yes, someone who's not in great shape could do a great job by doing maybe even assisted lunges by maybe holding onto a barbell or a wall and allowing them to get into a little bit deeper stretch. Knee flexion on the back leg. I think it's a great movement. Are push-ups a great exercise whether you bench 400 or you can barely do a, a push-up plank? Yes, great movement. Do we need to talk about these things? Are you benefiting anybody by saying body weight training is a trend? This industry needs to change and the pop media still has control of it and that's why we're here ripping them apart. The ripping and the tearing. And it's just starting to get a little annoying. I did another one of these videos a couple years ago and I swear it's the same list of trending things. That's why, look, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but somebody's making money off this stupid thing talking about body weight training because they probably have a training program that's body weight training and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Employing certified fitness professionals. As the fitness industry grows, there's an increased importance and emphasis on hiring certified professionals. Just like last year, the industry will continue, continue to prioritize hiring professionals that will have been accredited through educational, educational programs certified by programs that are fully accredited for health and fitness professionals. No snake oil here, please. Now, I did drop out of college. Full disclosure, but I did go to college for probably about three years. Um, I ended slowly as I was getting, uh, I stopped first year of uh, college, I played basketball. After that, I started focusing in, in on strength and conditioning almost immediately. I was probably 19, 20 years old. Uh, I was basically doing the research to help myself. I wanted to become a basketball player and player at a higher level. So I just wanted to get in better shape. So I started doing research. Uh, from there, I decided to not go to college any longer. I just wasn't my path. And so I decided to take the fitness thing a step further and I wanted to make money. Uh, I wanted to learn more and make money. So I studied probably two or three years at the junior college I was at, um, you know, sports nutrition, a couple of the training courses, a couple of the weight training courses, things of that nature. Then I ended up going with NASM. This is not sponsored, not affiliated with them at all, uh, National Association of Sports Medicine. I just did research on what majority of gyms across the nation would uh, need credential wise to get hired as a personal trainer and that was the number one that came up, so I took it. Truth be told, I probably learned more at the college courses, especially the sports nutrition course. Uh, shout out to my teacher, don't remember your name, it was over 10 years ago, uh, but he taught me a lot about nutrition. And he was really by the book, but he was really accurate to be honest. Now, 10 years later, learning more and rubbing elbows with more nutritionists and dietitians, uh, a lot of what he said was accurate. The training I learned in the accredited professional <clears throat> uh, health accredited uh, program, um, they taught you a good amount of anatomy, uh, a little bit about programming, um, kind of a little bit about block periodization, and that's about it to be honest. They honestly, a little bit of muscle fiber stuff, not too much. Uh, I think it was solid. So I'm, what I'm getting at is I think, yes, you're better off with a certified trainer opposed to not, but a certified trainer isn't necessarily good. You know, the, what I learned the most is reading articles, magazines, books, podcasts, YouTube videos, rubbing elbows with some of the strongest, best strength and conditioning coaches, powerlifting coaches, powerlifter strongman, training with them over the last 10 years, having some mentors, asking questions, and interviewing the greatest minds in the fitness industry over the last 10 years. And I know that's not possible for everybody to do, but that's where I learned. A combination of reading, combination of doing, 
This is the first, second year, this is the second year in 10 years that I haven't had an in-person client. I've always tried to gain experience by coaching people in person. Uh, I still coach people online, et cetera, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, so the experience of yourself doing it, uh, getting some kind of reading, learning, book learned, if you would, and then some type of mentorship, internship, uh, learning from others around you, uh, training and progressing with those that are above you, smarter than you, more experienced than you. I think those three are a combination of what makes a good coach. And then, you know, some of it, I think, I don't know if it's genetic or learned also, but there's a huge communication uh, factor and reading people. It's, it's a person job, you know, it's a one-on-one it's a -on -one, uh, communication issue. So some people can have all this book knowledge, but can't communicate with their clients or communicate different cues. So there's a lot of things that go into it, sure. A personal trainer is a great trend of 2019, but I think it has been for a long time. Yoga. <clears throat> Again, I dropped out of college. I'm now, and I'm no historian, but I believe yoga has been around for hundreds of years. So for this to trend in 2019, wow, you know, the ancient practice has been on the list for many years. Yoga has taken on many forms like power yoga, yoga lattes, yoga in hot environments, and more. And now that you've seen goat yoga, who knows what other forms of yoga the future holds. So I don't know why they're reporting these trends. When I think you should make a trend list on a YouTube channel, on a magazine, on the news, I think it should be things that help people progress towards their goals. And these people talking about goat yoga, it sounds like they're more trying to, you know, get buzzwords and kind of like a, a giggle or a laugh or a Google out of their website, which is fine. I understand how marketing the internet works, but yoga is great. Mental, physical, all great. And again, if it's something that you enjoy, I do think you still need some strength training above it to be fully well-rounded in the health spectrum, but yoga's great, hop into it. <clears throat> this one's gonna, <clears throat> this one's really gonna light me up, boys and girls. Uh, fitness trend 2019, functional fitness training. Now I've had a lot of arguments with a lot of people. There's a couple companies out there that literally their marketing scheme or their marketing buzzword is functional fitness. And I ask you, what is functional for you may not be functional for me. Function has to do with the goal, the intent, what you're trying to do, right? Sure, are squats functional um, for majority of sports, team sports athletes? Yes, they're, they're great. But that's also just a great general strength movement. So we'll just read in what they think functional is here. One of the most practical items on the list, functional training, is using exercises to improve balance, coordination, strength, and endurance to improve activities of daily living. Now, I agree with that. So if your goal is daily living and we can try to build exercises, as a strength routine and conditioning routine to help your daily life that you feel better, whether it be playing with your kids, going for a hike or whatever hobbies you like now, that is functional for you. But that doesn't mean it's functional for me. Maybe I'm a professional archer or a professional basketball player. The intensity in the exercise selection that's needed for me is going to be very different from you that just wants to play a little bit of baseball with their kids, right? So function depends on the duty at hand, depends on the athlete, depends on the goal. Let's not just throw that word around like it's anything, or, or I, I don't mind using the word, but let's not throw around that word like it's the end all be all. To improve balance, coordination, and strength and endurance is a much different conversation and a much different label than just functional. A squat, for example, is a functional exercise because it mimics the motions it takes to bend down and pick something up off the floor. It actually doesn't. That's probably more of a deadlift, but let's not, let's not rip these guys too hard. This trend is to rise in the part thanks to increase of fitness programs that cater to older adults. See again, what does that have to do with older adults? I understand that older adults probably haven't put the time into strength and conditioning, probably haven't put the time in the gym to, to, to maintain the muscle mass. As we do get older, we lose muscle mass, especially if we're not training. If we're training though, we can hold that muscle mass for a much longer time, let alone bone density and other uh, markers. But that doesn't mean that you know older folks need to do functional fitness more so. I think we just all need to find a routine and discipline that's gonna allow us to get a little bit better. Exercise is medicine. Encourage the health providers to get their patients <clears throat> an exercise regimen and analyze physical activity as part of the regular checkup since the survey sent out. I actually think that's probably the number one. Exercise is medicine is a great, great, great quote or trend or whatever might be going on. I do think um, that if you eat generally healthy, you try to get in some micronutrients, you stay in control of your, some moderation 
in your serving sizes. You get a lot of sleep, you get a hydration, you sweat a couple times a week. Just get a little bit of cardio in. That heart needs it, your body needs it, it feels good to sweat. I think for me, the biggest thing I like cardio recently over the last year, I've added a lot more since my more competitive powerlifting days, is I love how it makes my brain feel. I do cardio first thing in the morning and my brain's starting to feel good. I wake up, a little cup of coffee, go in, get my 45 minutes an hour lifting in, and then I'll bang out 10 minutes, half an hour of cardio, and then the rest of the day, I'm really pumping, I'm feeling good. Um, but exercise as medicine is a great preventative thing, right? The more muscle we have, the the, the, the less fat we have, the better uh, food quality we put into our body, the more sleep we get, the less likely we're gonna come across things. Later in life, sure, some things are, 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 we don't know how to stop them, but I think you're gonna give yourself the best chance to succeed, to have a healthier, longer life. And now, some, long, you know, some of you might argue longevity is not the goal, but I think we all want, um, a higher quality of life as long as we are here and as long as we are kicking in with family, friends, and doing the most we can with what we have. So uh, I, I do think exercise and medicine, I know I ripped this little poor article apart, I'm sorry, uh, but exercise and medicine is a great, 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 great initiative. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do wanna talk more on different topics. I have a list going on my phone. We're gonna record them as we go. This is the setting. Welcome to my show. I'm Silent Mike. Be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, comment below what topics trend, news, fitness, nutrition, whatever it might be you want me to cover, maybe even link an article below, whatever it might be, I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna check them out, and we will record more videos. Dropping two videos a week, ladies and gentlemen. Turn on notifications, Monday and Thursday. I appreciate you, I'll see you on Twitch, I'll see you on my podcast, have a good one. Salam alaikum, I'm out of here.